टूडे वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट ई सी जी और इलेक्ट्रोकार्डियोग्राम इट इज द ग्राफिकल रिप्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिकल एक्टिविटी गोइंग ऑन इन द हार्ट नाउ हाउ टू रीड एन ई सी जी इन जस्ट टेन स्टेप्स बिफोर दैट वी नीड टू चेक द कैलिब्रेशन और स्पीड ऑफ द मशीन विच इज नॉर्मली सेट एट ट्वेंटी फाइव एम एम पर सेकेंड सो वील डिस्कस द ई सी जी इंटरप्रिटेशन इन दिस मैनर रिदम रेट एक्सिस पी वेव पी आर इंटरवल क्यू वेव क्यू आर एस कॉम्प्लेक्स क्यू टी इंटरवल एस टी सेगमेंट एंड टी वेव नाउ स्टेप वन इज रिदम टू चेक द रिदम वी चेक द आर आर इंटरवल एज इन दिस ई सी जी आर आर इंटरवल आर इक्वल एंड देर इज पी वेव बिफोर एवरी क्यू आर एस कॉम्प्लेक्स सो दिस इज अ नॉर्मल साइनस रिदम इन दिस सेकेंड ई सी जी एज यू कैन सी द आर आर इंटरवल इज नॉट इक्वल एट एनी टाइम and there is no identifiable p wave the rhythm is irregularly irregular which occurs most commonly in atrial fibrillation now look at this ecg normal regular rate with regular drop beat so rhythm is regularly irregular which is seen most commonly in second degree heart block type 2 step 2 it is to calculate heart rate from an ecg if the rhythm is regular in ecg Heart rate is calculated by 300 divided by large boxes between RR interval. And this is a ECG graph paper. If the speed or calibration of ECG machine is 25 mm per second, then one small square corresponds to 0.04 second and one big square to 0.2 second. So, large uh, five large squares is equal to 1 second. Now in this normal sinus rhythm ECG, there are four large boxes between RR interval. so the rate will be 300 divided by 4 that comes out to be 75 beats per minute but if the rhythm is irregular on ecg as in atrial fibrillation rate is calculated by number of r waves in 6 seconds multiplied by 10 so as to get rate per minute so in this ecg strip there are 9 r waves or 9 qrs complexes so the rate comes out to be 90 beats per minute So 300 divided by RR interval formula is valid only if the rhythm is regular. That is why we should first see the rhythm and then should calculate the rate accordingly. Now step three is to calculate the axis. First of all, normal cardiac axis is from minus 30 to plus 110 degree. And to know about the axis, we first need to know about the 12 lead ECG. There are three bipolar leads, which are lead one, lead two, and lead three. and three unipolar leads which are augmented voltage leads that is avr avl and avf and there are six chest leads which are from v1 to v6 now to calculate the axis most commonly we use perpendicular leads that is lead 1 and avf in this ecg net qrs complex in lead 1 and in avf are positive so if we plot these positive deflection on this diagram we will get a vector in the normal cardiac axis range so this is a normal axis ecg now look at this ecg net qrs in lead 1 is positive and net qrs is negative in avf so this ecg showing left axis deviation or lad and you can remember this by a mnemonic left leaves where net deflection in lead 1 and avf are in opposite direction or as if they are leaving whereas in this ecg net qrs is negative in lead 1 and positive in avf so this is a right axis deviation and you can remember this by a mnemonic right returns step 4 is p wave so first of all see whether p wave is present or not if present see the morphology for p wave morphology we will look at lead 2 and v1 Height of normal P wave is less than 2.5 mm in limb leads and less than 1.5 mm in precordial leads and the width should be less than 0.12 seconds. In this ECG as you can see in lead 1 P wave are tall and uh, tall and peaked. These are called as P pulmonal which is seen in right atrial enlargement and if P waves are bifid or have a notch in between it is called as P mitral. remember m m shape for mitral which is seen in left atrial enlargement 
Step 5 is PR interval. It is from the start of P wave to the start of Q wave. That is why some call it as PQ interval. Normally it is 0.12 to 0.2 seconds. That is 3 to 5 small squares. And it is prolonged in AV blocks. Reduced in WPW syndrome in which there is an accessory pathway which conducts impulses faster than the normal, producing shorter PR interval. And PR interval is depressed in pericarditis cases. Step 6. It is Q wave. It is called pathological if more than two small squares deep and usually indicate current or fast MI. As you can see deep Q waves in inferior leads 2, 3 and AVF. So this is ECG of old inferior wall MI. Step 7 is QRS complex. Normally it is 0.08 to 0.12 seconds that is 2 to 3 small squares. It is widened in ventricular arrhythmias which can be ventricular ectopic or ventricular tachycardia or ventricular fibrillation or any pathology below bundle of his. QRS is also widened in bundle branch blocks. Step 8 It is QT interval. It is from the start of Q wave to the end of T wave. As a rule of thumb, normal QT is less than half the preceding RR interval. An abnormally prolonged QT is associated with increased risk of ventricular arrhythmias, especially torsade de pointers. Step 9 ST segment. It is the flat isoelectric section of ECG between the end of S wave that is the J point and beginning of T wave. As in this ECG, you can see ST elevation which could be commonly due to acute myocardial infarction or in pericarditis. If ST elevation is present in V1, V2 then it is septal wall MI. If in V3, V4 then anterior wall MI. If present in lead 1 plus AVL and V5, V6 then lateral wall MI and if present in 2, 3 AVF then it suggests inferior wall MI. ST segment depression is seen in NSTEMI, myocardial ischemia, posterior MI and many other causes. Coming on to last step that is T wave. It is upright in all leads except AVR and V1. Tall, narrow, symmetrically peaked T waves are commonly seen in hyperkalemia. Broad, asymmetric, peaked or hyperacute T waves they are seen in early stages of STEMI or ST elevation MI. Inverted T waves are seen in myocardial ischemia or infarction or can be in ventricular hypertrophy. Now let's discuss about how the ECG looks like in hypertrophy. In left ventricular hypertrophy, add deepest S wave in V1 or V2 more than 35 mm, then LVH is present. Whereas in right ventricular hypertrophy, there will be right axis deviation. R by S ratio more than 1 in V1 and less than 1 or equal to 1 in V5 or V6 and also R wave in V1 is more than 7 mm. This is the simplest criteria to detect RVH. So this is all about ECG. Hope you liked our video. Share this information with your loved ones and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thank you.